Hello, everybody. This is Father Pete McCormick, and I am joined uh, by five amazing Notre Dame student athletes. And in a moment here, I'll give them a chance just to talk a little bit about their own particular experience. But we're calling this session the Fighting Irish Fellowship, a chance to just talk a little bit about the experience of, of what we're going through right now in the midst of the pandemic, um, and a particular theme, which is, is grief. And I know that sounds like an odd way to start off a fellowship session, but what we found is that people are grieving. They're um, experiencing different changes in their own lifestyle. Um, and what we're trying to do is talk a little bit about our own experiences of it. Not to come in as absolute professionals about this, but just to share a little bit with the hopes that um, these personal witnesses might be able to provide some hope and some context for other people who might be going through similar things or just interested about how other people are kind of processing or dealing with um, this new reality that we face. And so in my role as a priest, my job is really just to ask some questions of these great people and every so often to pop off theologically if I think it warrants it. So with that being the case, um, Leah, you are in my upper left-hand corner, so I, you get the privilege of starting and also you're the freshman of the group, and so uh, we'll pick on you first. Um, maybe if you could just start by talking a little bit about who you are um, and then also maybe to talk us a little bit when you found this news out. Um, kind of where were you and, and how did you process it then? Okay, so I'm Leah Hanks, a freshman on the softball team. I'm an outfielder from Florida. And when we got the news about our season, we were in California on our spring break training. We were training at the time, getting ready to play a few games. And we got the news that our game was canceled for the day. So at first our game had been canceled because the team we were playing against, their whole season had been canceled. So at first, okay, we were just like, well, this weekend is canceled. We'll probably go home and see then. And within the next few hours, we kept getting updates from the AD. And eventually we got to the point where the season had been canceled. And it was, as a team, we took it pretty well. We didn't have, like, too much grief and too much negativity about the whole thing because we were pretty positive. Our coaches made sure we stayed positive throughout the whole process. And they reassured us that they would be giving us all the information that we needed. So we felt confident that our coaches had our best interest and all the, the decisions that were being made were for our best interest and to keep us safe and healthy. But as for now, we're just FaceTiming as a team, chatting, keeping up with each other, working out, holding each other accountable. Leah, thank you so much for that. I, I want to come back to you with a few questions in a little bit here, but maybe we'll kick it over to Monroe if you're okay going next, and we'll just kind of work our way through here. So I'm Monroe Olson. I'm a junior on the volleyball team. I'm from Valparaiso, Indiana. And at the time when I found out, I was actually traveling, and I was coming back from Mexico. So I had no service for four days. And when I turned my phone on when I get back, I – had over 100 texts. I had missed a group call with my team and my coaches and all of our staff to find out that our spring is canceled and that my last spring with the team is unfortunately cut a little short. Our games and everything are canceled for our spring ball and whatnot. And just hopefully we'll get back to being with each other during the summer. So I was a little lucky that I'm not a spring sport. So my full season wasn't cut off for me and I wasn't in the middle of a game or whatnot, but it was a little abrupt because I went from being on spring break, relaxing in Mexico, thinking I was going back to head into 20 hours of practice and have a scrimmage in two weeks to my spring season being over and missing all these phone calls and whatnot. Thank you so much. Rachel, how about for you? What was it like? Okay, well, my, well, I'm Rachel. I'm a junior thrower on the track and field team. Um, I'm from Danielsville, Pennsylvania. Um, and yeah, my experience is pretty interesting because I was at nationals. I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico for indoor track nationals. Um, and yeah, everything happened pretty quickly. Um, so when they canceled school, well, like on campus classes Wednesday morning, we were actually in the air. So we didn't find about all that till we landed in Albuquerque. And so, yeah, and it just get, kept getting restricted more and more. Like by Wednesday evening, they were saying like only coaches and like close family were going to come watch. And then by Thursday morning, it was just coaches. Um, but by about one on Thursday, we were actually just about to go over the track to practice. Um, 
we found out that the ACC was pulling out all ACC athletes. Um, so that's when it was done for us. The whole thing was canceled a couple hours later by the NCAA, along with all like spring sports and everything. Um, so yeah, everything just happened really quick. I was obviously, I was pretty disappointed at first. Um, when we found out everything, cried outside the track a little bit, but um, yeah, but I was just thankful that, you know, I'm a junior, so I have, you know, another year at this, but I was there with another thrower, one of my teammates who's a senior, so I was trying to be there for her, no, like, her not knowing, like, what this all meant for her future, and yeah. So, Rachel, you're in an interesting situation. It's, it's interesting to compare it to Leah, right? So, Leah is at the, not the start necessarily of your season, but the earlier part of your season in mid-March. Um, Rachel, here you were drawing to an end, and all of a sudden, similar to Robin, we'll get to this in a moment, of um, this is the time that you're kind of preparing for all season. What was it like to all of a sudden be all ramped up and amped up and ready to go, and then all of a sudden have to be like, you know what, there's a, there's a bigger reality that's at play here? Yeah, it was honestly kind of bizarre. So we, a couple hours later after we had everything had kind of settled down, we like went back to the track to like, you know, take some pictures and some stuff we were planning to do after we competed. And it was just like the weirdest atmosphere in there. Like people just kind of hanging around, not really knowing what to do. And something I saw that I'll probably like never forget is I think it was two guys from Virginia Tech who were 400 runners who just ran their race. Wow. Yeah. And like on one hand, it was like kind of funny and like kind of like a good way of dealing with everything, but also pretty sad because like yeah. we knew that this is like what we had been working for the entire season and yep. just kind of taken away. Yeah. When they ran it, Rachel, did they run full speed? Did they? Yeah. No, they were just like running their race like normal. And wow. Yep. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Now we'll get down to the, the two gentlemen here of, of the group here. Charlie, we'll let you go first and we'll kick it over to Robbie. Awesome. Uh, so I'm Charlie Trents. I'm a grad student on the lacrosse team originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and I went to Notre Dame the past five years. So I've been around a while. Um, when I got the news, so I guess a little backstory, we were on spring break as a team and we had just gotten back from Ohio State on Tuesday night. And I, my ankle had been hurt the past two games, so I didn't get to play at Ohio State. And on Wednesday night, everybody was hanging out together. We were actually, um, this sounds bad in retrospect, uh, given like how severe the situation is, but we were watching Outbreak um which is a pandemic movie very popular and we were just <laughs> yeah and, and so we were kind of watching that and then like part way through the movie you get uh like news pops in your phone that the nba like somebody on the nba has tested positive um and then i remember us pausing the movie and actually turning on the president's like white house briefing which is you know something that I don't usually do on a daily basis and watching that and they had closed borders with Europe and by now we're starting to think wow like this is pretty serious um but we had practice we were supposed to play Michigan that weekend and we had practice the next day and so um, our, our practice was scheduled for I think about like two o'clock in the afternoon on that Thursday yeah. and in the morning you had a lot of people texting people on other teams trying to figure out what is the Ivy League doing with their season what yeah. is the ACC doing the Big Ten so we had practice that afternoon and it was it was just a weird practice because it was at that point there hadn't been anything official from the NCAA or the ACC but it was kind of in the back of everybody's heads um, like what is what if this is our last and so there were the first half of practice we were putting in the game plan for Michigan and then the second half of practice we pulled out kind of like the mini goals and just played mini three on three games which is not something we would normally do in the middle of the season for a practice um, and so at that point everybody was like you know something's up and as soon as practice ended um, coach brought us together and said hey guys I hate to break it to you but our seasons um, at that point it was suspended indefinitely. So there was the possibility right. of maybe uh, coming back later, but it's just weird to have your season end. Usually like I haven't been fortunate enough to, you know, end on a win in the national championship. 
championship. So usually your season ends in the locker room at, in the playoffs um, after a game where everybody like knows that that was the end. This was kind of weird because it was an every, everyday practice and all of a sudden it's over. Thanks, Charlie. I'm going to kick it over to Robbie. Robbie it had a really interesting situation. So a midseason injury uh, at Maryland this year, nursing that injury back. You can talk a little bit about that, Robbie, if you want. And then, you know, we're in Greensboro and get this news. So I'll kick it over to you. Yeah, so uh, I'm Robbie Carmody. I play on the men's basketball team. And uh, we got the news on a Wednesday driving to shoot around at about probably 12 p.m. Um, and the night before had been weird because all the NBA stuff had just been canceled. And we were at Snack talking about – I think you were, I follow, I think you're there, Father Pete. We were talking about, like, like where it was going to go from there. Yeah. And then as a whole, the, ba- like, the basketball community, like, I, we know each other pretty well. So you hear from this, from this team, um, stuff's going to be canceled. You hear from the other team, everything's fine. So there's just a lot of speculation going into the day. And then on the way to shoot around, we were getting uh, like the, I think the Big Ten canceled, Pac-12, everything had been canceled. But the Big East game was still going on. And then Florida State was still warming up the play. So we were like, if that game tips off, we're going to have a chance to play today. But um, about probably like two minutes away from the gym, we were going to be up for shoot around. Coach Bray came back, uh, the back of the bus, and told everybody we were going to turn the bus around and head back to the hotel because the AC tournament had been canceled. Um, so that was kind of a weird situation. We all, we all kind of went back and, um, we all went into a room together and talked about like what we thought was the best, best way to go from here. Um, and we just tried to have, tried to have as much fun as a group as we could because we knew it was going to be our last trip together. So we were just trying to, trying to hang out as a team and, spend that quality time together that we weren't going to be able to have because everything was being canceled. So maybe I, we can shift now a little bit. Robbie, thank you for that. And, and open this conversation up a bit. The simple fact is, is there's a lot of things we don't know, right? And many of us are in states where there's stay at home orders that are in place. Um, and we're just kind of taking it day by day, week by week. Um, and so there, there's, a, there's an understanding sometimes of, of something called anticipatory grief, right? That we begin to forecast into the future, we can become worried about what's to come and we can allow that to occupy our time. So my question for you all is, is as you're, as you're thinking about where we find ourselves now, how are you making sense of it all? And and maybe what's, what's giving you a, a sense of hope in the midst of all of this? So how are you making sense of this right now? And what's giving you kind of a sense of hope? And if you want to think about that for a minute, and then whoever wants to jump in, they can jump in first, and then we'll just kind of like work our way around. Um, for me, one thing I think that's helped me kind of come to terms with everything and have like positive view on what's ahead is the fact that everyone's going through what I'm going through right now. And I think that's like the main thing I try and hold on to. It's not that it's just me and it's not just in my area. It's all across the country. It's all across the world. So just being able to have those people in your life that are going through the same thing as you and be able to have these conversations and express your concerns and your worries with someone else who is very understanding is what makes it easiest for me to try and find the light in all of this. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, so like something that I that I've found is helpful is as as student athletes we aren't we aren't able to come home as much during the school year because we have to stay at home and train and practice and um, this has been a really good opportunity for for me and other athletes to get around their family and have that family time that we haven't been able to have um, I think we've been we've been sitting down at the dinner table and having family dinners every night which is something we probably haven't done since I was like eight years old so. <laughs> It's been it's been a cool that's that's been a, the cool thing about it is seeing how it's bringing my family closer together. Yeah, I love that. That's so awesome. Um, similar to Robbie, I think that um, despite all the things that are going on around us, it's a time that you could take advantage of the off time that you don't normally have to spend with your family and even work on your craft. I know I've been training a lot alone just so I have this time because you often don't get that much time in the season to work on the little things. So I've been using this off time for my advantage just to 
take care of myself, make sure like I'm emotionally stable, making sure like I'm there for my family and my parents because they're both in the medical field. So just being that extra smile in the house when everybody needs a little brightness in their life. Leah, you brought it up. I think it's so awesome. I, um, one of the things that's been giving me a great hope is, is actually those frontline workers, people who are in the medical field, emergency personnel, folks in the grocery stores, housekeepers. I, I mean, these individuals who, who are on the front lines, who are cleaning, who are caring for, I just continue to be moved to see the compassion that other people have for perfect strangers uh, and the way that they, they go above and beyond to care for them. So it, that, that's been something that has really given me like the human condition, the, the big heart that people have demonstrated has just been so powerful. So uh, please, please thank your parents uh, on my behalf for, for what they're doing because it is truly heroic. It really is. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. Rachel. Yeah, and Leah, something you said that I kind of agree with is about like using this off time. So one of the worst things about like when this was all going down was like not knowing what was going to happen, like not knowing because like track is an indoor and outdoor sport. So most of my focus after indoors cancels like, okay, what does this mean for outdoor? Um, but now that we know like, okay, there isn't going to be anything, um, can kind of use this time to like refocus forward to next year and like use that as motivation. Um, Say more about that. So what does it mean, Rachel, to kind of like, okay, so you, what I hear you saying is, is like, you have, you have owned the fact that this is where we are now. And what you're trying to do is say, all right, this is the new normal. How am I going to take advantage of this and use it not only for like my own personal growth, but also to kind of like hone your craft as an athlete? Yeah, I definitely feel like that's, it's kind of like a making lemonade out of lemons type of thing. <laughs> I love that. It, it took a little bit for me to kind of like deal with the whole thing of indoors being canceled. Cause like, again, like that was what we'd worked for all season. I had like worked through a couple of injuries and a bunch of other stuff this year. So to have that mm-hmm. kind of taken away was tough. But at the same time, one thing I've looked at is this time off is a good thing. Cause I can like rest and like rehab those injuries a little more. Um, but also almost creating like a little fire like okay I didn't get a chance to like kind of prove myself this season I can only use it to like yes. push me harder for next year you know what I mean I love it thank you thank you yeah I just wanted to piggyback off of what Rachel was saying um, for me I, I'd say there's two main things that are kind of giving me hope or helping me get through it the first would be just trying to find something that I can compete in on a daily basis, even if it's just against myself. Um, huh. I've been playing competitive sports for the last 18 years, almost uh, year round. And so this is one of the only times where I don't have anybody to play against. I don't really have a gym to work out at. Um, it's mostly just going for a run outside. And so trying to, like I'm not a distance runner at all. <laughs> so trying to start out like, Hey, like maybe today I'm going to run two miles and tomorrow I'll run 2.2 and then 2.4. And you know, just trying to like building up and having those daily kind of competitions with myself. I've really enjoyed it just cause it gives me a chance to get outside of the house. Um, and also makes me feel like I've I don't know, accomplished something with my day. Um, and then the second, like, bigger picture perspective um, that's given me hope has been just to focus on every day and not necessarily, not necessarily start to worry about, you know, what's one month from now or two months from now or three months from now going to look like. And so I think something for me that I kind of learned growing up and Sunday school or whatever is just a this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it um just that simple phrase and so being able to wake up in the morning and focus on that and trying to find joy amidst the these hard times has kind of helped me stay grounded yeah that's so good I was talking to uh, a mentor of mine and and he uh he said that you know like it's it's fitting that that we're we're encountering these struggles in the season of Lent, 
right? This, this season of which we have the chance to kind of reflect on our own relationship with God. And um, in a particular way, we're recording this on uh, just a few days before Easter, a moment in time in which we realized that, you know, Jesus hung from the cross, he died, people looked at him and they thought, ah, that guy's an abject failure, look at him. And then one day later, two days later, three days later, it's a very different story. Um, he's, he's a sense of hope that even the cross can be transformed. And all of you in your own way, guys, have, have demonstrated how you have taken difficulties, crosses, one might even say, challenges, uh, and you've transformed them. You've sought to find you know, the hope, the, the goodness, in even a tough situation like this. And that's just a real powerful example. And so maybe as we begin to wrap this up, there's a lot of people who may watch this. Um, and and if, you, if you want to say any one thing to them, it might be someone who's been a lifetime Notre Dame fan and maybe a fellow student athlete. What would be one thing you'd want to say is they're kind of grappling with all that's going on in this world. And I know that's a lot of pressure, like just one thing. But if there was, if there was any one thing from your heart that you wanted to share, what would that be? I think I would say that this whole thing has kind of helped me put kind of my life in perspective, especially as it pertains to athletics. So, you know, if you kind of talk about Lent, like, you, I don't know, you give something up for Lent. So, like, if, I don't know, if nationals is something I had to give up for, like, the greater good, you know, of, like, of public, public health and people's lives, like, you know, that's fine. Like, I was just going to, like, throw a, throw a weight, but that means nothing compared to other people's lives. And so, yeah it's given me hope that like knowing something good is going to come out of all of this. And I guess that's what I'd say. Beautiful. Thank you, Rachel. I think just kind of like piggybacking her, it really has like changed my perspective on things. And I think it just shows me how simple, like the things you should be grateful for are mm -hmm. just the fact that we can be at home and we can be doing this video chat and we can be still continuing our education and I'm here with my family who this is the longest I've been home in like four years. So just like just taking advantage of what the situation is now and just reminding myself to be grateful for what has still remained in my life through all this. And to all the fans, everyone's going to be back and everyone's going to have good seasons ahead and all this will just be motivation. I love it. I love it. Thanks, Monroe. Um, something that I definitely would like to share is that I think the situation is only going to be as good as you allow it to be. So keeping a positive mindset and a positive attitude and just making the most of the situation. I think that's the most important thing right now, getting down on ourselves and what the future may hold, letting that stress you or worry you isn't like the smartest path to take. So just staying positive and going day by day, taking it step by step. I love that. It's right. It's like one day at a time, right? If you get caught up in the big thing, like you, you, it's overwhelming, but one day at a time, gratitude, it's a great approach, Leah. Thank you. Uh, one thing I would say is just don't, don't let this time go to waste. Um, although we're, we're, most of us are stuck at home, you can't really do much. Um, there's still ways you can, you can train, you can get better. And um, it's also a time for you to, to grow closer to your family, to, to people that you're close with, because there's not really, anything else to do besides talk to them and just just make them make the most out of your time with the people you care about i love it man thank you robbie i'd say mine is a little bit more forward looking but i'm really excited to see um kind of where we go as a society coming out of this and i don't think um I guess I, I just want us to be able to make the most of what we have been able to cherish during this experience um, as we go back out into our like normal life. And so taking every moment you treasure with your family or the ability to uh, read a book or Zoom call with your friends, I think if we were just to you know, continue our normal life and forget about all that we were grateful for, uh, during this time of quarantine, then we'd be missing out on something. So um, I would just say I'd encourage everybody, and myself included, to you know take the best of what's happening now and carry that forward, even when life returns to normal. Thank you, Charlie. And uh, as we wrap this up, our first ever 
uh, conversation, Fighting Irish Fellowship, you guys are forever going to be the OG. You can always say, if this thing becomes something, you can say, I was there for the first one. Uh, so thank you so much for your bravery. Thank you for your honesty. It is so great being with all of you. And with that, have a great night, everybody, or wherever you are, a great morning. Um, go Irish. Thank you. Go Irish. Thank you. Go Irish. Go Irish. Go Irish. Go Irish. Go Irish. <laughs> Appreciate you.